turn. Jeez, look at me. And I thought my yearbook photo sucked. And that's me. Man, that dress does not look good on anybody. Turn. Turn? What if I don't want to turn? Who's going to turn me? You? Why don't you turn this? Something you should know about me? I have a little problem with authority. Turn. In second grade, I told our music teacher, Mrs. Florentine, that if she wanted us to sing like birds, she should get herself some freaking birds. I laughed so hard I peed. And then we had to sit facing the corner during recess. We've been, been friends, friends ever since. since. And that's Rachel. Turn. Sweet Rachel. It's only nice one of the bunch of us. I feel so bad we dragged her into this. The thing is, we did it all for her. Really, we did. That was the idea anyway. You know what, maybe I better explain. We're bridesmaids, not the good kind, who love the bride like a sister and want to make her wedding the most special they ever know. We're more like the avenging angels who are going to give you what's coming to you type of bridesmaids. You know what, you're coming in on the middle of things, so maybe I should back up a bit, say 20 years, so you can meet the fourth member of our little sisterhood. This is where she lived. Still lives. It's such an amazing house, it has its own name. Belle Fontaine. Kayla McNabb lives here with her mother. And occasional step. Oh, and servants, of course. You need servants when your house has its own zip code. And by the way, Belle Fontaine is French for My house is so much nicer than your house will ever be. It's a good thing Kaylin was an only child. She didn't do sharing very well. She was much better at taking, but we didn't mind. We were just little girls, blinded by the magic of Belle Fontaine. Could you blame us? There were tea parties on the lawn with homemade biscuits and a secret staircase. You got to it from inside of this huge wardrobe. And it led all the way to the backyard. We felt so lucky to be there. Oh, and when we didn't, Caitlin would remind us how lucky we were to be there. So, then we play our own little version of hide and seek. And we called it, I know a place where Caitlin can't find us. It was a pretty spot, under a cherry tree. But then Rachel would feel guilty and we'd all go back. Once upon a time, there's a beautiful princess that lives And listen to Caitlin. Talk about Caitlin. And make up stories about Caitlin. Got married and lived happily ever after. Her house, her rules, her ego. What's that? I'm the groom. No, you're all bridesmaids. There has to be a groom. Nuh-uh, it's my wedding. Mom! Your dress looks really pretty. Well, duh, of course it does. Mother! There she is, like most normal nine-year-olds, wearing a wedding dress. Right now, we're playing her favorite game, wedding, and we're losing. Honey Bell? What? What are these girls doing to you? They're not listening. It's a wedding, Caitlin. There has to be a groom. Ah, don't you think a lot? Well, doesn't there? Well, yes, technically there, but it's not very important. Here, let's use this chair. Thank you, Abigail. There, isn't he handsome? And from a wealthy family, I understand. Lovely bride. Thank you, Mother. This was our life with Caitlin. Pretty much through high school. She called the shots and we played the parts. Why? It's a small town. You take what you can get. And in Lambert, Louisiana, we got Miss Caitlin McNabb. After college, my folks moved out west and Parker and I both headed for New York. I got a book published. <laughs> it sold okay. You know, for a first novel. The second one is coming along. Slowly. Very slowly. Meanwhile, Parker went the acting route. She did a bunch of plays off Broadway. Well, off, off. 
off Broadway. I mean, she was good. But we always kept in touch with Rachel, who never left Lambert. She was going out with this guy, Tony, she was crazy about. And that seemed to be enough for her. I mean, from what I knew, I don't get back home much. Parker goes back a lot. She actually likes her parents. And that's how we ended up in Lambert last week. Her parents' 30th anniversary, and she dragged me along. Parker's dad was taking her mom on a cruise she'd always wanted, but first, the mandatory party where every living relative can ask us why we aren't married or famous yet. And Parker does plays in New York all the time, don't you, dear? Uh, well, I, um, I audition all the time. <laughs> this is why I don't get back much. Sometimes I get callbacks which is sort of like a chance to audition again. You know what, she is constantly in plays, and she is fabulous. Oh, she gets that from me. You gotta lie to them. Tell them what they wanna hear. And how about you, Abby? You got another book coming out? <laughs> yes, she does. She has a huge book coming out, <laughs> but she's sworn to secrecy by her publisher. Oh. You know, Mom, I'm, um, I'm gonna go check my voice now. Oh, is it about an audition? Maybe. <laughs> Good luck. Knock them dead. Great being home, isn't it? Surrounded by familiar faces that will never understand you. Air, I need air. You're outside. Air without relatives. Oh, oh! Is that Parker Waldossi and Abigail? No, Abigail Scanlon. Oh my God, it's oh. Caitlin. Run for your life. I can't, I'm in heels. Oh my goodness, get over here. It has just been forever. <gasps> mother, mother, you remember Parker and Abigail? Yes. Uh. Hey, Rachel. Rachel, hey. Did you change your email? Uh, I've been trying to get a hold of you. I'm sorry, I Oh, just... oh my goodness. Y'all don't even know why I'm here. These are my bridesmaids. Yep, I'm getting married. <laughs> to a groom or a chair. Oh, you and your little quips. You know, the wedding is in 10 days, and I so wanted to invite y'all, but Mother said she couldn't find your addresses anywhere. I'm sure if you called Parker's parents, what's that, Parker, like 30 years in the same house? Mm -hmm. I'm sure they could have told you. Oh, gosh. Well, of course, Mother. Goodness me. You're right. Next time, huh? Oh, oh, let me introduce you to everyone. Rachel, you know, of course. And these are my other super bridesmaids, Fitzy, Ashley, and Ashley. Oh, you're not hearing double. They're both really named Ashley. <laughs> I spell it I-E, and she spells it E-Y. Some people get confused. But not us. Right, Ash? You got it, Ash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, look at that ring. Oh, Picture oh, yes. of so, Rachel, you're a bridesmaid. I so wish I could come to the wedding. I can meet Tony. He's gonna be there, right? Say cheese. Uh, yes. Oh, yeah. is that him? I recognize him from your photo box. Nice, sister. There's our gorgeous groom. Oh, Tony Bear. We have been waiting for you. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, bridesmaids, groomsmen, let's get this lunch moving. Oh, you, stop. Someone has a game he wants to catch at three. Uh, <laughs> Y'all, let's go. Oh, okay. Oh, Gregory, do you? So good seeing y'all. Close your mouth. Rachel, an old friend of yours. And I'm guessing you haven't talked to her in a while. So yeah, that's the Tony that Rachel used to go out with. Although we can't officially acknowledge that ever happened, so this is me not acknowledging. You're Henry Kent. He used to have big ears and a slutty sister. I grew into my ears, and I'll tell Carol you said hi. Thank you. I don't remember you. Really? We only had bio together twice, and I asked you to prom. What? No, I'm just kidding. Uh -huh. I was two years older, and I spent most of high school tripping over my ears. So you still live in Lambert? Yeah, still live in Lambert. I'm sorry. No, I didn't mean it like that. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. Let's go find Rach. Okay. See you around. Bye. Cute. No. Oh, you take that. 
Now, you two just have to stay for the wedding. Oh, we would love to, but I have this big audition. And I have to recurl my weave. <laughs> You listen to you. Y'all know you want to come to this wedding. And Mother and I would just adore to have you, Mother. Have a safe trip back. Well, we would. Please think about it. Just let's go find Rachel. <laughs> Rach? Rachel! Rachel, honey, are you in there? It's okay. You have been dating Tony for like ever. He said he was the one. What happened? Yeah, why the hell didn't you call us? You'd have been mad and yelled at me. You're damn right! Oh. She stole him from you, didn't oh, she? Oh no, Caitlin's a good friend. After all, she asked me to be her bridesmaid. And why did you say yes? Just because I was brought up well. Oh, honey, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna put on that ugly fuchsia dress and march in that bridal procession and show the whole world that I'm completely and totally over Tony Fanning. Oh my god. That's an airtight plan. <laughs> Holy smokes. What's wrong? Um, you know what? Rachel just found out that she signed up for a phone plan that doesn't have texting. Three years, no refund. Oh, you should have asked me. Yeah, huh? Ashley leaves all the phone plans. I do. But Ashley knows where to find the best frozen yogurt anywhere. So wait, let me get this straight. One of you guys fills in what the other one doesn't know? Mm-hmm. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe Caitlin? Poor Rachel. I know. I mean, it's crazy. Tell me about it. Boo! I still need the big suitcase! Well, that's why I'm getting it. What could Tony possibly see in Caitlin? Boobs. He's a guy. It's a business transaction. A business yeah. transaction? I really shouldn't say anything. Have some wine, Lou. Did you hear something down at the bank? Daddy? Well, three months ago, Olivia put Belle Fontaine up for sale. What? They've owned it forever. Olivia ran through a third husband's money, was having trouble finding number four. Gold digging is a young person's game. And Tony's family loaded. A day after the engagement, Olivia took the place off the market. Sex for money? It's good to see traditional marriage is alive and well. Ugh, poor Rachel. We should tell her. Tell her if she witched all the love of her life, I think she knows that, Parker. Okay, but it's wrong. It's evil, okay? We can't just drop it like... Oh, it's my agent. I gotta take it. Okay. Hello? Oh, hey, Alice. Oh, the audition. I almost forgot about it. When did they want to see me? Oh. Okay, I see. Not, not even, oh, okay. <laughs> Love you too. Good news. Not even a reading, nothing. You know what, the play was flawed. I, the female characters were completely underwritten. It really wasn't even worth my time. You wanted it bad, didn't you? So much. Yeah, and here they take this, and I'll get some more for me. Mm -hmm. Well, how was I supposed to know, silly? A girl's not a mind reader, you know? Darling? How could Rachel and Tony have mucked this up? They were perfect for each other. We never met them. I'm highly intuitive. They were meant for each other, and now Tony is going to marry Caitlin. And Rachel's going to have her heart broken forever. <laughs> 3,000 years of watching romantic comedies, and it's just one big stinking lie. I mean, the couple stumbles around for two hours, and then miraculously, five minutes before the credits roll, they realize that they're meant to be together. <laughs> that is not how life works, my friends. Action movies have it right. You hate action movies. I hate them because they're right. In action movies, some psychopath takes 25 sweet people hostage and he's gonna kill them all. And then Bruce Willis comes Or Denzel. In there. Also good. He puts together an elite SWAT team of Navy SEALs and they go behind enemy lines and they do what has to be done. They wipe out the henchmen, the psychopath dies some spectacular death, and sweet people go free. That's what you need to make love work. A ruthless SWAT team with guns. Gavin still hasn't called yet? No. He went to LA for pilot season with his cute scene partner. He <laughs> swears he's not sleeping with him. You should not date actors. Who else do I meet? Oh, you met that really cute guy, Henry, today, and he liked you. No, he did not like me. Okay, yeah, he did like me, but he is a trap. There's like 300 of them in every hometown. Nice, regular guy, unpretentious. You go out on one date, and then all of a sudden, you wake up 10 years later with six kids, a fat ass, and ugly pink sweatpants. You like him. You really, really like him. I do, do not. What are you gonna do when he calls? He's not gonna call because nice guys don't call me. Just selfish actors who screw their scene partners. Now, what are we gonna do about Rachel? 
I said we go full bore SWAT team and break up Caitlyn and Tony. Okay, no more wine for you. No, I'm serious, right? That's what Will Smith or Matt Damon or any of those hot action guys would have done. We sneak into the compound, we bust up the hell up. What are we gonna do, disguise ourselves as German officers? Exactly. <laughs> All right, what the hell are you talking about? I'm saying we wear the uniform of the enemy. Bridesmaids. But she already has her bridesmaids. Okay, then two of them have a little accident. Parker, if anyone deserves to be knocked down a couple of pegs, it's Caitlyn. Rachel had one thing she loved in life, and Caitlyn took it. Are you really gonna let her get away with that? Do you really think we could take down Caitlyn? Do you think we could stop this wedding? We can do anything. Why? Because we are sophisticated babes from New York. Or, as Miss Olivia would put it, you girls are just a little too thinky. All right. I'm starting to like it. Caitlin is going down. Yes. The thinky girls are back. Yes. To love. To Rachel. To the defeat of the Third Reich. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, you are so right. This is the best frozen yogurt in all of Lambert. Mm. Told you. Aren't you glad you called us? So glad. We owe you, Ashley's. We really owe them. Yeah, but um, what can we give them that they don't have? Huh. Well, how's it going up at the house? Are you guys getting along with Olivia? It's okay. Yeah, not so bad. Ashley's, come on, we're your pals now, share. We can't do anything right. She's always on our case and she treats us like we're big dopes. Can you believe that? This is how we can help them. You mean our secret Olivia tip? You're right, yeah, she always liked us. Oh, really? Look girls, you have to understand, I mean Olivia's under a lot of pressure right now. Wedding and everything. Uh -huh. Is she drinking? Yes, constantly. That's what happens. Yeah, here's the trick. When she's drinking, tell her to slow down. Mm -hmm. Like, in front of everybody? That's the only way it works. What we used to do is we would count her drinks and then we'd let her know. Mm -hmm. She'd always thank us in the morning. We can do that. Yeah, we can. Do it. You'll be golden. How's the frozen yogurt? It's really cold. <laughs> if I eat it too fast, my brain freezes. <laughs> How can you tell? The trap is set. Their poor frozen brains never stood a chance. Well, you pick up a few skills when you live in the big city. How the world works. Oh my god, they're towing my mom's car! No, hey! Hey, what are you doing? Where did that come from? Been up there for about three years. Okay, well, we didn't know because uh, we don't live here anymore. We live in uh, New York City. Hey, doggy. How's it going? Living a dream, Henry. How about you? I'm good. You give me a sec. There's your boy. Okay. My mistake. Turns out you can park here if you're back in town for your parents' anniversary. So cute. Okay. Well. lost something somewhere. I'm gonna go look for it, just in case I did. I like your friend. <laughs> How did you do that? Pulled a thorn out of his paw a few years back. Or I'm a cop and Dougie owes me a favor. You're a cop? Wow, that sounded awful. I'm, let me try that again. Oh, so you're in law enforcement. That, um, that sounds like very important work. That uh, wasn't much better either. <laughs> I like seeing you rattled. It's cute. So listen, Parker. Look, I, I think you're really nice, and I so appreciate what you just did right now, but I, I don't think it would be smart for us. Take it easy. Nobody's asking anybody out. Okay. <laughs> just want to say, be sure you read all of our small town parking signs, and you have yourself a safe trip back to the big city. OK? That's it? My mother's great-grandfather built Bellefontaine with his own two hands. 
No, Mr. Woodward, it would be such an honor to have it grace the cover of your magazine. Now, I'm just writing the article, Miss Caitlin. I can't guarantee you a cover. Well, I see there are no weight restrictions on the brides you feature. That gown must have taken all the lace in England that year. That's the governor's niece you're referring to. She has a lovely complexion. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> Did you know, Mr. Woodward, that all the bridesmaids are living here at Bellefontaine right up until the wedding? And staying at such a magnificent home. Why, it's like living in a fairyland. <laughs> <laughs> now you. Oh, yes. You know all the girls are staying right here at Bellefontaine up until the wedding? I said that part. And, um... Snow globe. Yes. This home is so beautiful, isn't it? It's like an idyllic scene in a snow globe. Oh, that is so sweet of you to say. More Sherry 81. Oh, yes, precious. I believe I will. Number three. I beg your pardon? Oh, that's your third glass of Sherry. Actually, it's her fourth. She had a little nip in the kitchen. But I think that was scotch. What are you doing? Helping. We know you're under a lot of pressure, and we certainly don't want to see you get hammered like you did Wednesday night. When you fell in the duck pond. And told the gardener your hedge needed trimming. So we'll be here counting your drinks every day. And night when you really go to town. How thoughtful of you. <laughs> I think those girls gave us bad advice. Boy, I think you're right. Apparently, some of Caitlin's old rivals were pulling some silly sorority stunt. Oh, well, thank you, Mr. Woodward. I knew you'd understand. So we'll see you and your photographer tomorrow morning. Wonderful. Okay, bye now. Oh, Mama! Ha! Oh, fantastic news! Abby and Parker have changed their plans. Because of me, they are gonna stay in town for the wedding. <laughs> Isn't that just the best? Hmm. Oh, don't worry. We'll sit in the back. We're not gonna make a peep. Yeah, we don't even need to be in the photos. It's not like we're bridesmaids or anything. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Light bulb. What if you were bridesmaids? No. I mean, it would. <laughs> it would be a dream come true. Yeah. Right? Caitlin, may I have a word with you? Mama has something to say. Yes. Um, Mother, we would be honored if you would. Oh, for gosh sakes, you're my new bridesmaids. <laughs> <laughs> There's something I've learned in life. You can never have too many cherubs. Oh. All right, Sarge, we're behind enemy lines. What's next? Why are you asking me? Because you're the plotter. Didn't Publishers Weekly call you inventive? Abigail Scanlon is in full command of her narrative. <laughs> I will give you that one. All right, break up the couple. Break up the wedding couple. <gasps> I got it. We sleep with the groom. Huh, yeah. We help our friend Rachel by me sleeping with the love of her life. I never said there wouldn't be any casualties. Uh, <gasps> we sleep with Caitlin. Why do all of your plans have me sleeping with someone? Is this how you see me? A little bit. All right, well, if Tony is like most guys, me and Caitlin in bed together, I'll not be a deal breaker. I wonder where they have Rachel stashed. Probably in the ha ha stole your boyfriend room. No, she's in the persimmon room. How do you know? Oh, it's right here, under room assignments, and the bridesmaids news. Oh. Of course, an in-home published newspaper about your very own wedding. Guess who made the cover? Caitlin. I mean, I really think that we're overthinking this. If we want to get Rachel and Tony back together, let's just get Rachel and Tony back together. Oh, my life. We can fix her up a bit, boost her confidence, and we're all in a room together. Oh, my time. Cooking before. Come on. Just turn up the flame Show a little bit. Show me persimmon. And then I do not have to sleep with anyone. You okay with that? Oh, behold, the persimmon room. Ha, 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 ha. Rachel. 
are you guys doing here? How did you get in? We're the new bridesmaid. Really? Does Olivia know? Yes, she does. Is there something wrong with your room, girl? No, I just wanted to check out the persimmon room. Yeah. It's clearly stated in the newsletter that lights out is 11 p.m. A curfew? Are you kidding me? <laughs> By which she means yes, ma'am. Good night, then, Rachel. Good night. Good night. Good night. Sounds good. I know why you're here. I know exactly what you are planning. You think being a bridesmaid is a little game. You're here to laugh at our expense. No, we take what we're doing here very seriously. Yeah, like, um, like we're on a mission or something. This wedding is in eight days. I expect you to honor the sacred trust that Caitlin has bestowed upon you. We do understand each other, don't we? Yeah. Good. Well, I'm glad we've had this little talk. Now you two girls get to bed. You need your beauty suit. Especially you, Abigail. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Rise and shine, sleepyheads. Extra, extra, read all about it. Y'all made the front page. Look, old pals join bridal fun. Caitlin, tickled pink. Now, breakfast is in half an hour on the east porch. Yum, yum. Then at 8 o'clock, ladies, it is time to turn on the charm because Wedding Bells at South Magazine will be here for interviews and photos. Then at 11, oh, get ready. <laughs> Your first dress fitting. Oh, and there's so much more after that. So Y'all need to get moving, OK? Let's go. Chop, chop. Bye. <laughs> keeps this up, this is gonna need an obituary page. Well, being selected Caitlin's maid of honor is so completely the most important thing that has ever happened in my entire life. Oh. I'm sorry. Just ever since we were freshman rushes at Gamma Kappa. <laughs> Caitlin and I have been like sisters. More than sisters. We're like two big halves of one big Siamese twin. <laughs> the funny thing is, she's happier than we are. Morning, ladies. Hey. Oh, OK. <laughs> OK, girls. The better the interviews, the more likely we are to get the cover. I hope you're both thinking of lots of colorful anecdotes. Yeah, that's what we're doing over here. Yeah, I tried a couple jokes on the butler. Freaking killed. <laughs> oh, Abigail, you are just a regular old Dane cook sometimes. But seriously, when it's your turn to be interviewed, please, no frowny faces, no sassy attitude, and remember, you are the bridal support, and oh, dear God, please, none of that other thing you do. Oh, you mean sarcasm? None of that. Caitlin, I could never be sarcastic with you. <laughs> Thank you. Here we are, ladies. Eggs Benedict, with a rasher of applewood smoked bacon for Miss Parker, mm -hmm. and for Miss Abigail, spelt toast dry and soy bacon bits. Spelt toast. What, that means somebody ate it already? Yes. I'll take care of this, Abigail. Our bridesmaids' dresses aren't going to impress in the plus sizes, and we think with a little work, you could lose 10 pounds this week. If you cut off my leg. <laughs> now, it's not just diet. We're bringing in a personal trainer for you. And trust me, she is a miracle worker. I need a miracle. Look, I know you don't want to hear this right now, but this is seriously the best eggs Benedict that I've ever had. Parker and Caitlin. We used to play wedding right there on that lawn. <laughs> and now it's a real wedding. Yes, it is. When you see Caitlin and Tony together, bride and groom, how does that make you feel? Um. Ah. Uh, Sweet, dear friend, she is. Rachel? Rachel! 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 They used to run after each other like that when they were children. Rachel? Such memories. Right now, huh? Oh, I figured they'd ask me about 
came in, but I did not think they would ask me about Tony. Look, it's gonna be okay. We're gonna fix everything. Excuse me! We're trying to have a conversation. Can you wrap it up? Thank you. You're a prince. What do you mean you're gonna fix everything? That's why the Ashleys are gone and we're here. You did that? Yes, we did, and we did it for you. We're gonna help you get Tony back, so spruce it on up, girl. You gotta look pretty. Yes, he's gonna fall in love with you all over again. Oh, he can't. Yes, he can. Come on, there's still plenty of time. No, they have to get married. Whose side are you on? It's a secret, it's a big secret. I'm not supposed to tell anyone, so Spill I can't. It. Caitlin's pregnant. What? And it's Tony's. So, they have to get married. That sweet little baby cannot grow up without a daddy. It always felt weird with me and Tony's family. I think anybody who isn't rich like them is some sort of gold digger, but that isn't me. No, we know, honey. They made me feel so uncomfortable. Then one day, Tony made this joke about how I liked their big sailboat, and I lost it. I said, if that's what you think I am, then we should just break up right now. I didn't mean it. I was just upset and mad. And when I finally got up the nerve to call and say I was sorry, somebody else had swooped in and grabbed him. Huh. Yeah, let me guess, our lifelong friend, Caitlin. Yeah, she threw herself at him. Under him, more likely. He only slept with her once, but that was enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just like my mom always says. <laughs> How'd you know she was pregnant? She told me. She said she went to Dr. Wallach. They did a test, baby. So now they have to get married. Tony's doing the right thing. He always does the right thing. Except playing that game of happy slappy with Caitlin. Promise me you will not break up this wedding. Promise? Fine. All right, we promise. You know what? That gold digger is pregnant and it's a shotgun wedding. This marriage gets more traditional all the time. What are we gonna do? Nothing. We just buck up and be sweet little bridesmaids to that bitch and her hellish mother. Ugh. This is not fun anymore. Caitlin, if I'm gonna stage this, we need the groom and his groomsmen. Your mother never kept her husbands for very long, but she certainly knew how to get them to show up on time for all the rehearsal. Thank you, Charlotte. Late. Four guys trying on tuxes. You can't pull them away. Settle down. Now, first thing, we need to match our groomsmen with our bridesmaids for the processional. We'll do this by height because this day is all about aesthetics. <laughs> You had me at hello. Oh, um, I didn't say hello. <laughs> Gary in heels, she's gonna be a lot taller. Yeah, Gary, he's right. I think I'm the girl for you. Plus, I am just dazzled by a guy that can rock plaid, so. Hmm. Kind of surprised to see you two here instead of Team Ashley. Oh, yeah, well, they had to present this big paper at MIT, and, you know, Caitlin asked us to fill in. You do know that I'm a detective. Like, for a living. Well, in that case, I'm not answering any more questions without a lawyer. Even if I invite you to dinner? I can't. We're on lockdown here. No dinners out, no men upstairs. Uh, too bad. I'm just trying to get a little background on the woman I'm walking down the aisle with. Uh, New York actress? God, next Monday. You two, let's go. Plenty of time to hit on her when you're tanked at the reception. Oh, dear. I don't know. Flippy, the dress was made for one of those shapely Ashley girls you discarded. This bony child has no rump at all. Where's your bottom, dear? Charlotte, this girl is as good as we can get. We're just gonna have to soldier on. Pin, my dear, till your hands bleed. Uh, hey. 
Excuse me, I don't think that this dress fits anybody. Oh, a woman built to bear children. Excuse me? If only there was a way of transplanting some of your womanly abundance to the one built like a little boy. A boy? Have you not seen these babies? Charlotte, she's going to lose 10 pounds by the wedding. I'm sorry. Why don't you try to alter the dresses instead of the bridesmaids? Abigail, dear, Abigail. You are going to be standing in front of hundreds of people next Saturday. You don't want them looking at you and recalling that hateful nickname they used to have for you. What was it again? Flabigail. <gasps> Young people can be so cruel. you down here. They moved everything. Everything. This cabinet, this cabin used to be full of cookies. Always. Even the, even the little Debbie cakes. God, the pink wrapper. I could count on it. Now she's starving me for 24 hours. And what does she give me in my happy cabinet? A freaking can of tomato soup. You know what? Fine. Not that bad. Oh. Bite around. Yep. Mm. Why, Abigail? She really put the knife in on that one. Just pull it right back out. She was just trying to get to you. One word, and that sad little 12 year old girl was back. But now you're beautiful, and you're a very successful New York writer. I was hitting her head up against the wall because she has not one idea for her second. Nothing. I'm blocked. I'm spent. I am a has-been after one book. Cold spaghetti? Give it to me. Mm. Mm-hmm. Nuh-uh. Okay. Remember when we used to sneak down that secret passageway and make snacks for movie night? Mm -hmm. Always the same snacks, right? It was, um, s'mores and then pink lemonade. <laughs> and always the same movie. Officer, Officer and a gentleman. <laughs> For two years, that's the only movie Caitlin would ever let us watch. Oh my god, that's it. Okay, Caitlin's not pregnant. Ready? Officer and gentleman, Lisa Eilbacher pretended to be pregnant so that David Keith will marry her. But Caitlin is Lisa Eilbacher. It's so obvious. She went to Dr. Wallach, Abigail. She got a test. No, mm -mm. I don't think she did. I think Caitlin is lying. Okay, you might need a little proof on that one. I'll get you some proof. A little Miss Skeptical, no butt. We move it, Dawn. Let's get going. We need our sleep. Let's go. And I need my spaghetti. Well, good morning, bridesmaids. What are you ladies up to? Uh, we were just gonna go into town. Yeah, I need to run an errand. You know, Miss Olivia doesn't like people driving off doing their own thing now. I need tampons. Well, have a good day. Bye! Alex cabinet? Uh-huh. Yes. You obviously got the recall notice. <laughs> the what? The recall notice, sweetheart. Don't you read the news? Yeah, um, a lot of our filing cabinets have been collapsing. Apparently the titanium brackets have a little too much alloy in them. Yeah, way too much. These cabinets were purchased after 1970? Um, I started here in June. Then we need to check those, don't we? file at random. You know what? How about M? M. Middle letter. Very wise. Uh, oh my god. Those glasses are so cute. Thank you. <laughs> they must have been really expensive. No, I, I bought them online. $20. Get out of here. 
Uh, would it be okay if I tried them on? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oh, uh, wow, they're so comfy. How do I look? Blurry. Can't see a thing without my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever uh, tried contacts? Because, you know, your eyes are really pretty. Oh, I, I did, but, but don't they hurt? Beauty is pain, girlfriend. <laughs> oh, she's pregnant. That's just an expression that we use to mean that this cabinet is crazy full, and it's about to go. So, we need to get that report in right away. Absolutely. Okay. Here are your glasses. Stay clear of those. <laughs> Lab report with your test. McNabb, comma, Caitlin, bun in oven. What about officer and a gentleman? Just like every other romantic movie. Okay, let us down. Hmm. Hmm. That was the orange ginger. Hmm. Fancy, don't copy off me. I wasn't. Girls, do I have to separate the two of you? This next one is red velvet. Very daring for a wedding. What do you think, honey? It's really good, I like it. Man, put food in their mouths and that's all they need. <laughs> not all, at least not in my experience. <laughs> Which is no doubt extensive. <laughs> you like it. Sweetheart, that's what you said about the last three. I like cake, all cake. Cake and me, we just get along. <laughs> Tony Bear, participate. Come on, we need an opinion from the groom. I'm doing what everybody wants here. It's just cake. Yes, you do like milk with your cake. Why don't you go get some milk, hmm? I think I will. He's just getting some milk. Well, if he's gonna have milk, I think we should all have a sharing. Rach, don't go. It's okay. We can be in the same room together. No, I don't think we can. Do you hate me that much? Is that what you think? I'm trying not to think anymore. Just uh, doing what I have to do. One stupid mistake, and I'm going to be paying for it for the rest of my life. I miss you so much. And I'm the one who messes up. And I wish I could go back, but it's too late. Rachel, I love you. Always will. I love you too. There's not much we can do about it, though. It's just nice to know. Tony Bear, this carrot cake is to die for. And then we both said. We still love each other. <laughs> I've been this happy in months. Isn't it wonderful? No. No, it's not wonderful. It's the opposite of wonderful. He's marrying someone else, and not just any someone else. He's marrying Caitlin McNabb. The great biatch deal of biatches. <laughs> hey, Parker, I heard there's some little kids playing outside. Why don't you go out there and tell them they're all gonna die someday? What are we all doing here? Seriously, we're miserable. We should just crash the gate and go. No, you can't go. If y'all left, I'd be a mess. We don't want that to happen now, do we? Go wash your face. Okay. We cannot leave her. Then what are we gonna do? We can't break up a wedding if we can't break up the couple. Well, don't worry about it, okay? I will find a way. 
Why? Because I am Abigail Scanlon, master of the Narrativita. Thought you were blocked and a has-been. Not yet, I'm not. I will figure this out. You got something for Tony, but nothing for me. Hey, you. You need a ring bearer, not a clown. You're not to smile. This is not about you. 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 I think we finally have an arrangement that works for everybody. Thank you, Charlotte. Yes, you are a genius. Oh, no! Oh. Is that something important? Some candid pics of fun with my bridesmaids. This is the big pillow fight, okay? Oh, don't be a big poop! <laughs> Abigail, at 8 p.m. scrapbooking in Caitlin's room, sleepless in Seattle in the den, or making popcorn balls in the kitchen. How about I jump out of the window of the stir-crazy room? Parker, you ditched I Love the 80s karaoke two nights in a row, all right? You can't sit in here and mope all night. <laughs> Amazingly, I can. Seriously, come on, get up. You don't leave Rachel suffering out there by herself. Fine, but I hate you. <gasps> Henry Kent. You look cute, answer it. <clears throat> Yes? Yeah, hi, it's uh, Henry Kent, small town police detective. Oh, hi. Very casual, nice. I know that it's a long shot, and I know it's tough getting out of the compound. Dinner? Yes, yeah. uh, absolutely. Well, great. How about crowdits in 20 minutes? Still there, right? It was this morning. See you there. I have a day, I have a day, I have a day. Fine, but I hate you back. <laughs> Do that movie again. <laughs> I mean, right now, I would be pasting baby pictures of Caitlyn on a page called Cupid's Butt. You're pretty hardcore up there, huh? We were matching pajamas. Ooh. So I'm still a little curious as to why you stuck around town. Quickly ruled out interest in me. Because we're worried about Rachel. This is awful for her. She's not even close to being over Tony. Sort of a sensitive area for a friend of the groom. Sorry, you want to change the subject? Nah, I mean, I... I know what's going on. I know why they're really getting married. Oh, yeah, secretly pregnant bride. What a cliche. What? She's pregnant? Oh, no. No, please don't tell me what I told you. It's okay, because I'm joking. 
Everybody knows. No, I'm serious, the bus boy knows. Hey, Javier, who's pregnant? Miss Caitlin. Uh, all right, well, I, I told you about Rachel, so what's Tony's story? Tony's a stand-up guy. He's doing what he has to do. But is he happy about it? Um, let's see. No. When he found out she was pregnant, he put his fist through a wall. But then he realized this is Lambert, Louisiana. It's 1870. And the options are get married or get married now. So he's biting his lip and taking his punishment. It's just one big misery fest, isn't it? Yeah. In fact, I'd, I'd probably have to say that meeting you it's the only good thing to come out of this whole lousy wedding. Look, Henry, I leave for New York the day after the wedding, and there's not much time, and I sort of have this rule where I don't sleep with a guy until I've known him for three weeks. Parker? Yeah? It's just dinner. Although, if I happen to find myself in New York in, I don't know, exactly three weeks, then... Why don't you stick around and see what happens? Because I live in New York City. My career is there, which I don't even have. I didn't tell you this, but my agent, Alice, dumped me yesterday in an email, which she signed, love. <laughs> so I'm going home to nothing, and I'm leaving this adorable guy here. Olivia has me so carb-starved that if you put your sweet hand on a Kaiser roll, I'd eat it in three bites. Out of the two of us, who do you think is more pathetic? Any band-aids? We were scrapbooking last night, and I got all these paper cuts. We have a winner. Oh, what a super morning it is. I just saw a red bird outside my window. You know what, Bitsy? I hope we all stay in touch when this week is over. Girls, breakfast is on the patio, not in the kitchen. Is Caitlin out there? No, our bride-to-be is not feeling at all well this morning. I thought I heard her throwing up. Is she OK? Well, these things happen. Morning sickness. Or somebody and her maid of honor were up late last night doing mucho mucho tequila shots. Pregnant girls don't do tequila shots. Unless they're not pregnant. Bitsy, you need to tell us the truth. Mm -mm. It'll be much easier on you if you just talk. Anything yet? No. Not gonna happen. Oh, what is this? Ooh. Oh, Mom. Those are mine. Where did you get those? From your room. Is that cashmere? I think so. And there's not a spot on it. It would be a shame if anything happened to it. Don't you dare. What do you got there, Abigail? You know, just a few things that spill on fine garments, like... Marinara sauce. Corp soda. Gets it right out. <sighs> Soy sauce. <gasps> the white vinegar and peroxide. <sighs> oh, well, look what I have here. Mm. Fruit preserves, and I think that's... Yeah, that's blueberry. We saw the lab results. Oh, that was my sister's urine. Muffy married an Irish Catholic guy, so she's always pregnant. Caitlin asked me to get a cup of her pee, so I did. Please don't tell her I blabbed. Or I can't recap the news. Forever. It's okay, Bitsy. It's over. Can I go now? Sure. Mm. I can't believe it. 
Caitlin lied about being pregnant to trick Tony into marrying her? That bit. That bit. Sam. Yeah, it'll make you feel good. Good. I can't. I just can't. That Sweetheart, don't hurt yourself. Sorry. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? This changes everything. Sure does. We gotta tell Tony. Yeah, we have to. When? <laughs> How about right now? Yes. He's here. We'll distract Caitlin and you go tell Tony. Me tell him I don't think I can. Uh, after what she did to you? After what she did to us? Yeah, you're right. I'll tell him I have to. Okay. Here goes. I'm taking my life back. Wish me luck! <laughs> Cowboys! Have fun! Be careful! Don't you do anything I wouldn't do! Oh, isn't that cute? They're going on a canoe trip. Male bonding. Three days out in the woods. No laptops, no cell phones, no strippers. Thank you very much. So when are they gonna be back? Uh, just right before the wedding, which is fine by me. All he has to do is shave and put on a tux. And they're not very complicated, are they? Got it. Why don't we just find out what river they're on, rent a canoe and some maps and stuff, and, and just hunt them down. Excellent. A plan that utilizes our vast wilderness skill set. Okay, well, what do you got? A headache. Mm -hmm. And I'm hungry, too. Careful now. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Is that Caitlin's dress? You got it, Sam? Oh, I was at the fitting. It is an absolutely beautiful gown. Do you realize what we're trying to do here? You're right. I was just. You're southern, sweetie. It's not your fault. We have to figure out a way to bring this entire wedding to its knees. And when we do, it is not going to be pretty. OK, well, we might need an actual plan. It's summer pearl. And what did I order? What color did I specify? Burnished eggshell! It's true, I was there. Burnished eggshell, it was lovely. Are you kidding me? It's ruined. The wedding is ruined. Oh, now, honey Belle, we've got time. We can fix it. I'm gonna get on the phone straight away to Jean-Louis. Oh, well. You better. You promised me. Every detail of this wedding has to be exactly only marrying this guy because of all the money you went through. I don't mind a loveless marriage, but I will not tolerate anything less than a perfect wedding. If it is not the wedding I want, I am not walking down your aisle. Period. It'll be perfect, honey Belle. It'll be perfectly perfect. It sure be a shame if anything happened in the next couple of days that would make this wedding less than perfect. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I just got chills. <laughs> yes, yeah, so is this the florist in charge of the McNabb wedding? Who am I? Caitlin. You can do Caitlin. Well, this is Miss Caitlin McNabb, bride to be. I would like to make a few changes to my floor. I would never order lilies ever since I was six years old. Do you know what they do to her? Her eyes water. And I get these awful hives all over my body. Mother, I need my ointment. Mother and I think a white tip is just so lost, so I was wondering if you had anything a little bit more playful. <gasps> yeah, something a little bit more playful. A dream bouncy castle is not what I dreamed about, Mother. Where is my white tent? We'll find it, baby. We will find it. Pop the damn thing, Blotman! Pop it! This is Olivia Wall, buddy, from Bellefontaine. Are you the woman in charge of the ice sculptures at my Caitlin's wedding? Mother! What is it now? What, honey Belle? Is there some little someone that they got wrong? That's 
so little. This was supposed to be a baby Cupid. Not some aroused satyr. Maybe uh, the guests could hang their umbrellas on him. That's the biggest one I've ever seen. I can't do this anymore. Honey Beth, breathe. It'll be okay. Breathe. Mama is gonna take care of it, okay? Breathe. Mama's gonna take care of it. Oh my, don't you girls look just lovely. Even you, Abigail. Oh, Miss Olivia, if you had wings, you'd be an angel. Hmm. Or nasty ass dragon. I heard that. Mm. Everything's humming along nicely, dear. I've seen the new cherubs and they're sweet as pie. And the flowers, oh, the flowers. Roses and roses, as far as the eye can see. What about the cake? You know, the one that says Mazel Tov, Bernie and Agnes on 50 fabulous years? Just a bad memory. I'm not feeling happy, Mother. And a bride should be happy the day before her wedding. More shoulders. Relax, darling. Mother has everything under control. Everything. You see, Caitlin, as I suspected, your dear old friends have been behind all of it. Detective, I believe we can hand this over to you now. Theft, destruction of property, harassment, malicious mischief. Do you need more? Oh, that's, that's plenty. Oh, and by the way, that dress was just a decoy. The real one is safely locked away. OK. I got to read you all your rights now. Wait. You call yourselves bridesmaids. You're a disgrace to the name. And not worthy of the dresses you wear. everything I did for you. Turn. So, uh, we all thought you girls men were on, like, this big canoe trip. I couldn't get off work. Wish I was there, though. Can I get more of a flattering light? Thank 
you so much. Turn. Don't judge us, okay? You don't know the whole story. Just stop talking until you get a lawyer. You're only gonna make it worse for yourself. We had to do something. Stop. Please. Hey, Parker. Oh, look, they're gonna let us take a picture together. You know, Ms. Wald, you're fully entitled to an attorney here. I know, but I'm not arguing with you. We did all of the things that you said that we did. Plus, a few more things, actually. Miss, you really want to wait for an attorney? It was the right thing to do. Henry, you're listening, right? I can tell that you're there. Close. What choice did we have? We found out that Caitlin's not pregnant. She lied to Tony. Tricked him. How about that? And why? Because Miss Olivia ran out of money. And she doesn't want to lose her big house and ten closets full of clothes. And Caitlin doesn't even love Tony. We heard her say it. But Rachel... Rachel does love Tony. And he loves her, and you know that. And the sham of a wedding is going to happen tomorrow if somebody doesn't stop it. Come on, Henry. This is about love. Don't you care about love? Oh, I kind of thought you did. I kind of thought that's a guy you are. <laughs> oh, do you know how much I've been thinking about you the past few days? I'm so glad this glass is here right now because. I would never have the nerve to tell you how I feel. <laughs> but for the past couple of days, I've been thinking to myself, what if I didn't go back to New York? <laughs> what if I stuck around here for a while? What would life be like with a guy like Henry? Well, <laughs> not a guy like Henry. I haven't heard everything you just said. You're very persuasive. And we can prove everything, Henry. I mean, well, I even know not about that. I mean, what you said about me and you. I'm crossing so many professional lines here. It's because you're a good person. I need to be a good cop. You believe what I said, right? About me and you, or the other one? It's kind of them both. How'd you do it? Hmm? How'd you get Henry to Springs? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I know. No, I did not. Oh, but you would have. Didn't come to that. You so would have. Did you and Henry hook up? We didn't. Yeah. Look, it's complicated. Complicated? Hey, your man's not marrying somebody else in 24 hours. Okay, bridesmaids, we've been thinking small. The time for girly little pranks is over. No guts, no glory. This is war. True that. You got any mustard? Tomorrow, we go in for the kill. We eliminate the most essential part of this wedding, the bride. I guess we have to. I know the estate pretty well. There's a lot of good places to bury the body where they'll never find it. Uh, breach, kill is just an expression. Oh, of course. But look at the shy one, all giddy and ready for bride. That is just adorable. Even if we don't kill her, she'll just come back. Not if we do this right. Don't worry about it. That gamma cap and mama's going down. Who's in? <laughs> Let's do this.
these are the three women I told you about. They may yet try something else. We cannot be too cautious. Are your men armed, sir? This is a Louisiana, ma'am. Of course we are. Good. Don't be afraid to use them. Oh, Reverend! Gorgeous in this dress. Oh, I know. Where's the veil? Oh, um, it's around somewhere. It's around somewhere? <laughs> Bitsy, do you know why I asked you to be my maid of honor? I have no idea. Find it. Olivia? What are you looking at? Am I the first person to fall asleep in a tanning bed? I think not. You should be looking after those three awful girls. Now move. Yes, ma'am. Well. So why do you think acting is so hard? Try getting paid for it. Hush you! Now or never? Now. Hey, honey bell. Ready for your big day? Please do appear any second. Rush week. Hi, we're for a 
pregnancy test. Wait, what? Yes, that's right. Oh. We have an appointment. McNabb, 4 o'clock. We're a little early. Oh. Don't mind her. She's a little nervous. It's her big day. You understand? Uh, 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 yeah, uh, room 7 that oh, way. Thank you. Oh. Somebody call my mama! Mama! Doctor, me here! Doctor, we in with you shortly. My Amazon car. Caitlin, where is my carpet? Caitlin? Pee in the cup, Caitlin. Never. Pee in the cup. Jamais. That's French. Caitlin, you are full of tea up to your eyeballs. You gotta go sooner or later. Oh, I've known that for days. I have the McNabb bladder. And I know what you're up to. What are we up to? You think that, you know, you know I'm not even gonna say what you think. We have all day. Hmm. Stop now, girl! <laughs> Stop. Well, your first Stop. mistake, officer, was releasing them. Listen, they snuck back in here and stole my daughter. Now you've got to find them. Bitsy's gone as well. Oh, this is a disaster. Those rotten girls are out to ruin everything. And after I practically raised them, I should have smothered them in their little beds during one of those sleepovers. Hello, darling. Oh, hello. Oh, you look lovely. lovely. Niagara Falls. All of the great, wondrous, enormous, flowing bodies of water. Whoosh. Listen to that sound, Caitlin, like a gurgling stream. Building, becoming stronger, beating into a mighty, mighty waterfall. Not gonna work. Oh my God, police. Crap. Oh, well, well, ladies, looks as if the cavalry has arrived. What is going on? There are police cars all over the parking lot. Uh, does this have something to do with you? Yes, sir, it does. I'm being held captive against my will. She's not. Uh, well, I actually... Here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna pee and you're gonna test it. Caitlin, I will call that reporter from Wedding Bells, and I will tell him exactly how you got that A-plus from Mr. Peterson in physics. Oh, honey, five minutes well spent. This is the Metro Police Department. We have the area surrounded. Please, surprise, come out. What the heck is going on? Bobby, it's not going to work. It's... Well, we did everything right. It should have worked. I'm so sorry, Rachel. You all are pathetic. You thought you could trick me? Make me fill your little cup? <laughs> the police are gonna lock y'all up while Tony and I take a nice long walk down the aisle. Me and him and all his family's money. You don't love him. Oh, what's love have to do with marriage? Marriage is an arrangement. And I arranged for Tony to believe that I was pregnant. Oh my God, how can you live with yourself? Well, in a big house with Tony and servants and no little diapers to change. So, see, Caitlin wins. You all lose. Like it's always been. Like it always will be. Wow. That was wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Better than I expected. Can I cut now? Sure. That's it. We're coming in. There is a lot of us. Relax, Henry. We cut. How do we do? We did great. Wonderful. It just gets better every time. Play it again, boys. Play it again. Tony, 
Um, I, I have something to tell you. And, um, and it's horrible to say. But, um, these wicked, wicked girls are about to show you a tape filled with lies. They made me drink something, God knows what, and, and, and I started saying the most outrageous things, but you mustn't believe them. No, 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 let's just get married and run off to one of your many, many homes right now. Yeah, right now. Tony Bear. Funny thing about those homes, as of yesterday, we don't have them anymore. <laughs> what are you talking about? Of course you do. As it turns out, Dad's company was holding some phony stock certificates. The SEC just shut him down. Family fortune's gone. So I guess we'll just have to raise this little baby on a budget. And I can do what I've always wanted to do. Teach high school. Oh, God. Now, there might be some lean years. I'm sorry, lean years? Uh, <laughs> What about the baby? Oh, God, there is no baby. Grow up. I need a drink. Oh. So, we're not getting married. <laughs> Honey, does this look like the body of a teacher's wife to you? How about you? Could you spend your life with a school teacher? No big wedding, nothing very glamorous. Just you and me. I couldn't imagine anything more wonderful. <laughs> what are you doing? Would you marry me, Rach? Oh, so much, of course. You have some bad news. I kinda lied. Oh. Nobody lost any money. I just said that to Caitlin to see how she would take it. You mean you're still rich? You still interested? Nobody's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Okay, 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 yeah. okay, 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 okay. Ready? We could be your bridesmaids. We have a lot of experience. Uh. <laughs> So it looks like you might have to stick around town a little while. Mm, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Yeah. Months later, we had our second outing as bridesmaids, and this time it was a lot more fun because we were actually rooting for the couple. You never saw anybody happier than Rachel. Hey, we're all pretty happy these days. Parker went back to New York, and about a week later, landed this incredible new job. Free scumbags! Huh. Free shades for tomorrow. Good job, everybody. She got a major part in a big action movie. She came back from Lambert a new person, a totally transformed, take charge babe. And she nailed the first audition she got. Oh, look at our little Parker, a police sergeant. Oh, and the best part, they let her hire her own consultant. Nice gun action. I have my hands up. <laughs> Henry takes the state detective exam next week. Oh, they're so cute together. And you probably heard about my news. 
This whole Caitlyn plot with the wedding and the scheming and the sneaking, yeah, it was so completely ludicrous. I figured there had to be a book here. So I banged it out, changed a few names, third week on the fiction bestseller list. <laughs> Look for me What's at a bookstore near you. What? Oh, where did all the ideas come from? Right here. You know, it just, just flows out of me constantly. Can't stop it.